everyone, Sebastian here from Green Music Productions and today we're taking a look at Smart Limit from Sonable. It is an intelligent true peak limiter. It has AI powered capabilities. So Sonable make a lot of AI powered tools. I reviewed Smart EQ3 on my channel. I'll leave a link in the description below. So make sure to check it out after this video. And as usual, if you like that kind of stuff, click the like button, subscribe and leave a comment. And before we start, let's hear about today's sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community where millions come together to take the next step in their creative journey. With thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people on topics including illustration, design, video, freelancing, and obviously music. Whether it's music theory, learning an instrument, music production, even the music business, there's a ton of content on there. There's even specific things like how to make beats, how to design great sound sounds, or even Cubase specific videos. To give you an example, I've been following this class by Will Edwards called Wavetable Sound Design Strategy, and it's really insightful. It gives you a lot of tools to create better synth sounds. Now most classes are under 60 minutes with short lesson to fit any schedule. So I'll leave a link in the description below. The first thousand people to use the link will get a free one month trial of Skillshare premium membership. Make sure to check it out and keep learning. So this plugin is supposed to make your life way easier when it comes to mastering or limiting in general. And I'm super impressed by how many features it comes with, yet the UI is super clean and simple to understand. So over here we have the AI and learning section. Over here we have some states so we can easily have different settings and switch the different settings on the fly. Uh, over here we have a preset uh, section so we can save your preset and load them in another session if you want. We have undos and redos, we have the limiting section, we have distortion monitoring section that is super useful because you can clearly see what frequencies are distorting while limiting. Uh, we have the loudness and dynamics uh, monitoring section over here and obviously the output bus and we also have a quality check this will give you tips on what to do to improve your uh, master we also have here we can select the different targets so if we're targeting spotify we can just select spotify and it will target the minus 14 lufs which is the standard for Spotify. Same thing for all the platforms. Everything is pretty much there, even YouTube. And we also have the broadcast standards. So whether you're working on music or on movies or trailers, you have all the broadcast standards as well. This is fantastic. So let's listen to what we're working on right now. So it's a pop track without vocals and it kind of sound like a Katy Perry production from the 2010 era. So let's try the AI algorithm right away. So we can select the genre over here. So since this is a pop song, I'll just select pop. And on the pop, we have different settings. So I'll just select 2010. So I'll just press the record button and press play and let it do its magic. So just like that, it automatically set the attack, the gain, the release, the limit. This is basically the true peak according to the Spotify target that I set. There's also other settings over here. There's a style and you can tweak those settings after you use the AI uh, analyzer. So the style is basically soft or hard. You have a dial between the two so you can set it to be more transparent if you go on the soft side and the hard side will make it punchier and tighter but it will pump a bit more. Uh, saturation will add saturation to your sound and it will make it sound louder but you will hear some distortion artifacts. Uh, the balance will basically filter the track so it sounds more uniform but if you raise it too much it might make it thinner as well so you have to be careful with that but it's really useful to tighten the, the low end and make your track sound more uniform overall. Uh, this bass control will basically raise the bass. Um, in this case, I don't think I need it because I'm, this is really bass heavy, uh, but it's really useful to have that. So uh, let's press play again and play with those settings. I'll start with this one and I'll move to the right.
So as you could see, the hard setting was way punchier. This is good for a pop song, but I feel like it's a bit too intense. So I'll bring it back to close to where it was. Uh, saturation now. As you could see, it make it sound louder, but we could clearly hear the distortion artifacts. So whether you like that or not, you can use that. Now the balance, listen carefully to the frequencies. So at 100 it makes it sound super thin which we don't like but at zero we can clearly hear that the song is not really uniform the bass is standing out the kick drum is standing out a bit too much but at around 30 is a really good uh, value for me Now, as you could hear, this makes the bass way uh, more intense and punchier, but in that specific track, I don't think I need it. It's always useful to have. Now let's click the quality check. So it says that the loudness seems fine, but the dynamic seems a bit high, so I can easily tweak that if I want. So it says by increasing the, the input gain, it will reduce the dynamics. So it basically telling me that I can raise the gain a bit more and it will be fine in terms of dynamic range for the, the genre that I selected and the target. So that is always useful. Um, a cool thing that this plugin comes with is a constant gain setting over here. So if I click on this, it will basically set the process signal to be at the same loudness as the on process signal. Uh, because most of the time when we hear something louder, we think that it sounds better, but it's not always the case, obviously. So this will allow you to clearly compare the process signal versus the on process signal and listen to what it's doing. So let's try that right now. Let's bypass it. Enable it. So in this case, I really like what it's doing. It makes everything a bit tighter. I would probably raise the bass control since uh, the unprocessed signal seems to be a bit more bass heavy, but not too much. And you can also try the uh, Delta. This will allow you to listen to what it's removing. So transient as usual, uh, this is what a limiter is removing, but it's always super fun to be able to listen to what it's removing. That's always cool. Now we have channel link. This is a bit complicated to understand, but it's basically uh, allowing the plugin to uh, treat the left and right separately. So let's say if I put it to zero, it will treat them separately. It will limit, let's say I have uh, something that is really loud on the right channel, but something that is really low on the left channel, it won't apply the limiting to the left channel only to the right since it's super loud. But if you put that higher, it will link them together. So it's a tricky setting because you don't want to have different processing if you're mastering a track necessarily. Uh, 75 is the default setting and it's pretty good. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Otherwise, uh, you have obviously dynamic range, loudness, all the good settings. Over here, this line right here represent the dynamic range and over here, the loudness. So you can clearly see where you are. Uh, so this is the target and right now I'm close to the target uh, in terms of loudness. I'm a bit louder because I raised the gain a little bit. Uh, you can change what you want to see. Uh, if you want to see momentary, integrated or short term. So uh, momentary is basically instantaneous. So if you look at the meter over here, it moves super fast. Short term is three seconds. So it takes a little bit longer to adapt.
and integrated is what you're looking for if you want to know the full track what's the loudness you put it to integrated you can reset the readings put it at the beginning and let it play throughout the song and it will give you the exact loudness so this is really useful let's try another state let's try the universal setting so uh, this is not specific to a genre so let's try this and see what's the difference uh, let's put it close to where it was press record So here I can toggle between state one and two while I'm playing. So let's do that right now and see what difference it has. So state two is a bit quieter. So let me bring it up to the same value just for fun, just so we can compare what it did differently. I hear a big difference and it's probably mainly in those settings over here and it's doing something else under the hood but it's really beautiful that you can just do that on the fly. You basically select your genre, click analyze, press play and it will give you the best result according to your target. Obviously you can do it manually if you want. Let me just reset this. I'll raise the gain uh, as much as I want. So you can do that if you want and you can tweak the limit and the gain, uh, the attack manually, uh, the release, you can set it to auto release. So there's a lot of stuff that you can do on your own, but it's super powerful if you're using the AI capabilities. Uh, some people will use services like Lander or even Ozone now has some stuff like that. But the limiting quality of this plugin, I compared it to L2, Pro L, Ozone and a bunch of limiters. And this does an insanely good job. It's super clean. A lot of other limiters will distort the signal at a certain level, but this one does a really good job at controlling your transients. I'll leave a link to their website in the description below make sure to check it out and as usual guys i'll see you in my next video bye guys